My name is Mike, and I'm from Fluence Labs. And today I'm going to tell you about uh, Marine, our general purpose WebAssembly runtime that like intended for run multimodal WebAssembly applications. And in particular, the agenda of my talk is as follows. So first of all, uh, I will talk a bit about the WebAssembly component model. Uh, I think that it's like uh, the most valuable proposal that now WebAssembly folks try to push. Then uh, I will talk also a bit about how we use WebAssembly influence and why we need our own runtime and what's like use case for WebAssembly in uh, like Fluence Labs and how, for example, AccuVM that was already mentioned also approach this model. And then finally, we will talk about the architecture of Marine and uh, our SDK and tools and how you could use Marine, debug your application and how it could be used uh, probably with IPOD and IPFS. So let's start with the WebAssembly component model with some basics. Uh, but first of all, like to be on the same page, I need to say that like WebAssembly has one important uh, restriction that like already was already mentioned, and uh, this restriction is about types. Yes, WebAssembly has only five basic types. They are two integers, two floating point, and one uh, types for seamed instructions. And usually everyone who develops their own runtime stumbled across the problem that it, like uh, we need to pass not only numbers but complex objects like strings, arrays, uh, structures, and stuff like that. And uh, like almost all runtimes uh, tries to solve it. It tries to provide some ABI to like grab string from memory, convert it to pointer in a size, and uh, Lower it back, so it's like uh, usual usual thing for almost every every runtime. Before the component model, because component model, like uh, I got I got all this text from the official uh, proposal, <coughs> so we could see here like the first uh, three high level goals. Yes, the first one is a defined portable uh, binary uh, format that would be like would provide your uh, language agnostic interface. And also, I would say that not only language agnostic, but also operation system and architecture agnostic interface. I think it's the most valuable part of this proposal. And uh, on this slide, you could see that could be called lightweight component model uh, view. So here you could see uh, like a container uh, or an application or a microservice that contains several WebAssembly uh, modules. And, but all, all of this module is comprised from different modules. So you could consider this as a, like this green boxes, you can consider as a, uh, like applications that itself comprised from libraries. Yes, like uh, when, when, you, when you write on, uh, I know, on C++, Rust and so on, you're always using some standard libraries, uh, some other libraries, and the <coughs> component is a thing that combine it, uh, combine it together. And uh, like uh, uh, having like high-level high overview of this, you could com uh, combine several components in one uh, container. And what and uh, like these arrows, it's what actually Marine does. So component could be considered as a uh, uh, modules or applications. And uh, like if you want to have several modules simultaneously, want to combine them, want to dynamically load, unload them. So in this case, we could use Marine. And uh, <coughs> you know, like uh, I have been uh, watching for the component model proposal for a long time, for about four years. And I would say that this proposal has a difficult fate, really difficult fate. Uh, here you see like uh, main milestones. So uh, actually component model proposal is uh, combined from two proposals. First one, usually called interface types. And second one is model linking. Yes, in interface types, it, uh, there, were, uh, there were a lot of milestones. By mi milestone, I mean something that completely changed the proposal. And uh, like in 2021, uh, WebAssembly folks decided to combine them together in one proposal and uh, split interface types to two proposals. And uh, use, so I will show you later, but now in component model, only like a tiny, fraction of interface types, of initial interface types, version two that I code here, uh, only used. And then like other 
uh, other like part is called adapter functions. Uh, they only like in, in the plans. But component model is already there. You could use it uh, from last some time from Rin. Uh, I would show you the difference. So like and, and difference on the slide. So what sometimes like allows you to do component, but uh, doesn't allow you to combine components together. Like doesn't allow you to the dynamic load and load uh, modules. Uh, so let's talk a bit about interface types and about model linking. So interface types, uh, it's very old picture from 2017, but not so much changed from this time. Here we could see like uh, this module that I would call row WebAssembly module. Row because it supports only row types, only numbers, uh, basically. And uh, each this module is wrapped by so-called adapted module. And this wrapping means that for every import and for every export from row module, there is a corresponding adapted import and adapted export. By adapted, I mean that like uh, it could lower, it could lift and lower types. So, for example, in adapted module, you could pass strings, arrays, and uh, complex types. Then it could lower it and uh, call row module that do the, that do like actually all, like all logic. And uh, and back yes, and back you could lift type from row module and provide it as a complex object as an output. Or also you could use lifting for imports. Usually, like all interface types, all stuff related to them, they are located in a, a custom section because custom sections are completely user defined, and you could see you could put it like uh, <laughs> any bytes you want. And usually, they are located in not in like their own section, but uh, like in a custom section. Uh, the next proposal is model linking. So model linking is just what like what we need to combine modules. Uh, actually, there are two types of linking scheme, shared everything and shared nothing. So the first one, uh, like based on shared everything from a module, every every state, every state that a store, like uh, according to specification has, such as memory, tables, globals, imports, and so on. And uh, the second one, like the station is different. Module encapsulates its state and provides only exports and imports. And modules could be combined together only by imports and exports. Uh, on this slide, you could see also like a picture from the official presentation of component model. Here you could see like main keywords, main new keywords. Uh, probably the most interesting part is here is adapted function that like remember that it was switched from interface types as a separated one. And here you could see like lower params and lift result. So this how uh, interface types would work this like they uh, receive string yes or like any any complex object then lower it uh, to web assembly to roll web assembly uh, module memory and pass and call actual, the actual function yes and then the lift result back and it what actually like so in IPOD uh, it's there is a similar process <laughs> so we also have like so-called data module and you have rules how data could be lifted and lowering uh, according to the different targets. So in this sense, like interface types is very, very similar to IPOD in my case. So in, 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 my, in my opinion, sorry. Uh, <coughs> and also the last, last slide from the official presentation, it's how, it's what is the target of component model. Here you can see a span like um, WebAssembly folks says that like uh, we have trade-offs here. We could support uh, we could support, for example, static uh, lifecycle, static linkage, uh, but like no JIT and on, on, uh, no garbage collection. On the other side, we could support full JIT, yes, but no these properties. And uh, the goal of component model is to support only this part. Is that what I said like on this picture with green boxes? So it's like actually green boxes is only a static linking. So when you, it's, you, you could consider it as a, like uh, when you're programming on C, C, Rust, and etc., you could uh, build it as a static library or static binary. It's uh, essentially it, it, is it, it. Uh, And the uh, last slide from the section is about with interface. That's what I ask. Uh, so 
actually like component model proposal also specifies, so actually it's a very complex proposal. It, I would say that it's a rule changer for the WebAssembly world. It specifies with interface. So it's this interface comprise of several like keywords, but there is a keywords related to like data format. So and, and there you could see that like with interface support records, lists, tuples, and all, all bunch of uh, complex types. So with, with interface, you could describe every type you want, actually. So like <coughs> when component model uh, like would take place and would uh, widespread, there wouldn't be uh, any necessity for custom ABI for custom type conversion, marshalling, lifting, and lowering, and so on. So there, there would be a standard way to do that. Uh, so let's move on to the Fluence WebAssembly use case. Uh, so actually, uh, Fluence is consists of like Fluence stack, and probably the most valuable part of Fluence stack is our language called Aqua, that intended for uh, like coordination and peer-to-peer -peer network. It inspired by pcalculus. It allows you to, for, to coordinate and orchestrate uh, network requests, and uh, <coughs> how it connected with WebAssembly. So <coughs> basically, Aqua allows you to like compose WebAssembly modules located on our peer-to-peer -peer network. And uh, in itself, these modules, or I would say the services, and I would describe what services on the next slide, but the services, they are WebAssembly based. They based on a <coughs> WebAssembly component model with help of interface types and model linking. They could be stateful or stateless, and they could be extendable uh, like with so-called mounted binaries. So actually from a WebAssembly uh, module, we could call external binary. I, I would show you interface later. Uh, so that's how it could be extendable. And Fluent Service actually is just a group of modules combined together with a shared NAS and linking scheme. And uh, one thing that I forgot to mention, so if you need shared NAS and scheme, uh, you would need interface types because it's impossible to decouple like complex type from uh, WebAssembly memory without revealing memory table and so on. The only way to do that is with help of interface types. And uh, that's why like Marine also support all of this component model. Uh, and here you could see example of uh, Fluence service comprised of three modules. Uh, so we have like SQLite, Redis, compiled to WebAssembly and compatible with uh, uh, the Marine interface. And uh, like uh, here SQLite is linked together with some module called Facade uh, through exports and imports. And also imagine that there is a, some authentication module that also linked with the Facade one. <coughs> and actually like in WebAssembly, oh sorry, in Fluence Labs, uh, we have chosen WebAssembly uh, because like it provides a lot of advantages, like really what? First of all, it allows you sandboxing modules by design, so our miners could not like think about security. Uh, they module, so they uh, could control effects. They could control modules that like allow you to do something uh, damageable on your system. Also. Uh, WebAssembly allows you to make life cycle of modules independent on each other with help of component model. So you could develop your module or one could develop, uh, one developer could <laughs> develop their module uh, like uh, with only consistent API. So and it's like, uh, as a, uh, it could be considered as development of dynamic library. So it's, so it's the same experience. And here you could see like uh, slides that have already been used. So it's how Marine is used inside our peer uh, architecture. So actually Marine is runtime and in Marine we run both services and Aqua VMs. And there are like a bunch of services, bunch of Aqua VM, so, uh, and uh, queues that manage this pool. And there is a like peer core that manages these queues and uh, handle events between these queues. Uh, and the Fluence network could be considered like this. On every peer in our network there is a Marine and there is an Aqua VM. And also Marine could be run in a uh, browser on the client side. So there is a, like almost the same experience. Uh, and what's dig what dig into the Marine runtime itself. So when we uh, initially started Marine, uh, we defined some high level goals. So the first one is the most important one is Marine should provide like, uh, <coughs> like the best developer experience that possible. 
Yes, and for us, the best developer experience is like allowing developers to write on when you are asked, where it's possible. Uh, also, Marine should allow you to compose modules to run on server and client side, as already said, and also have a fine grained resource control. Uh, and here you could see the Marine architecture, very like high level blocks. So, Marine actually has layered architecture. And on the bottom side, we have like supported uh, runtimes. Here you can see Wasmir and uh, uh, some browser runtimes. So for right side, there is like doesn't uh, like there is no difference between runtime. And on the right side, we support now Wasmir and moving to Wasm time. Uh, so it's it supports us. <laughs> uh, and we have we have a core, and the main like feature of core is that it, uh, like when you use Marine from the Rust side from the Rust API. The core is a Rust, like the Rust code that compiles to native. But when you use it from the JavaScript, core compiles to WebAssembly and run into the Marie's Marine JS wrapper written on JavaScript. Uh, so this like part of Marine is itself for Marine and Marine JS. Uh, so you could find also like the complete details and complete uh, description of the scheme in our Marine book. So then then here. Uh, so and um, how like how we approach this multi modules? So actually, we have three types of modules. The first one is facade. So facade uh, modules they expose their API of like entire service, and only uh, they could be called from Aqua. Not like every module from a service, but only facade. Uh, pure modules they contain pure logic. Uh, they can't access file systems. They can't access external binaries, uh, and uh, uh, the last one is effectors. <laughs> effectors could access everything, could access file systems through WASI, sockets uh, when they will be ready, when we switch to WASM awesome time, uh, and stuff like that. So why we need pure and effector modules? <clears throat> because effectors uh, are those modules that could damage your system, damage system of uh, miners. And miners uh, should have a chance to pick which modules they trust, which effector modules they trust. And when you deploy a pure module, uh, so everyone could be uh, could feel safe because pure module doesn't call any import, and uh, yeah, WebAssembly is sandboxed itself by design. And here you could see another picture how it could be represented. So uh, Marine could load several modules, combine them together to services, and uh, provide a way to call the services from uh, like from the external API. Uh, <laughs> and uh, like, let's dive a bit how like service uh, looks like and uh, what is the, how they could uh, combine together. Uh, so here you could see service configurations, basically TOML file. So uh, let's consider a service that contains of three modules. Uh, it's like just an example. It's not a, like real service. Uh, so the first uh, module is facade. It should be more like. Um, uh, put as a last line. The next one is a curl adapter. So here you could see that we should specify a name and also should specify the section called mounted binaries. It's essentially our interface to external binaries. And this like line allows a module to call binary located by this path. Uh, the last one is local storage. Uh, so here you could see a bunch of settings. Uh, for example, for each model, you could adjust like a memory, memory, maximum memory size. Also, you could adjust WASI state. Uh, you could say that like this module could use only these files, and inside like there is a, could be a mapping uh, from like this path to some shorthand. Uh, <laughs> and probably the most important uh, thing here for those who want to use Marine from uh, as, as a runtime itself from the Rust project is uh, this enum called iValue. So iValue is uh, like enum that you could use uh, specifying host exports, host imports, and uh, using it as a like uh, like f from your Rust projects. So um, several uh, <laughs> guys said that like it's really difficult to uh, like work with uh, pointers, like grabbing strings from memory and stuff like that. And here, like you could see, I value the type that, uh, like, allows you to do not use, uh, do not do that. Yes, it's like has just string, just array, and this type is a uh, like type that you could use in your 
host export function. So it's functions that you uh, written on Rust or like language that you uh, from, from, from uh, like that, uh, from those that you use Marine. Um, and uh, here you could see a descriptor of host exported function. So actually, this function is a closure that takes some context. It doesn't matter, so it just allows you to do some low-level stuff and a vector of i values. And i values is essentially an argument that like uh, would put into your import function. And the result is also i value. So here you could specify argument types, output types. There was a great question about how dynamic linking works. And uh, like in our case, it works like that. So you should specify types. You like they can't be uh, get from out of the uh, air. So you need to specify types uh, of a function, and also you could have your handler. So uh, let's consider an example of uh, uh, how a mounted binary import could be written on with the scheme. So here we could see like a function that uh, returns this descriptor, and the most important part here is the closure itself. So closure uh, receives arguments. Yes, that is just a vector of i values. Code the functions that actually do some logic over this i values, and then like uh, convert result back to i value. So that's how like it could look like. Yes, only three lines. You don't need to care about memories, about that string represent by point or in size and stuff like that. So you have handy i values, and you could work with them. Uh, and also you should specify types here, but I think it's not so uh, bad developer experience and it's uh, like from some cases unavoidable because you need this dynamic function linking and that's how the entire function look like. Uh, so let's move on to the Marine SDK and tools. And here you can see how the whole world uh, could look like with our SDK. So we want, as I already said, we want uh, uh, developer experience close to when you were asked. And here's the only thing that you need to do is just to use our uh, procedure macro called Marine and uh, like applying this macro to a function makes it exportable. So this code we would compile with our Marine CLI tool with just Marine build uh, to WebAssembly module that exports a greeting function from itself. And here, please note that this function takes strings. It not takes raw WebAssembly types, it takes vanilla Rust types. Uh, so, like, let's imagine, like, let's remember uh, again your own order service that we consider, and see how. Uh, so, th this example was about previous example was about exporting. This example was about importing. So, <laughs> imagine that we have um, this service that contains of three modules, and uh, we want to like. Uh, combine them together from the code perspective, from the Rust side. And to do that, like, the only uh, thing that you need to do is just to use Rust uh, foreign function interface. And also, if you wrap, like, this external function with the Marine runtime, you would uh, have almost the same experience that, like, with uh, uh, Rust FFI. So, also, please note that here you could use uh, vanilla Rust types. Uh, of course, there are some constraints. Uh, you can't use like every type you want. I, I will show you later what constraints are. And here you could see like how this module could be uh, built. Yes, there are three WebAssembly files: uh, facade, curl, and local storage. And uh, so this this is like just a little little example. Yes, uh, curl uh, WebAssembly file just download file with help of curl binary. And the local storage just saves somewhere on the file system. And here on the facade module, you use uh, exported function from these two modules. Uh, that's how it looked like from the developer side. And uh, uh, of course, not only strings and not only vectors could be passed. You could pass records, so I mean structs. Uh, so you could even use uh, uh, references, but it's not so much sense. Uh, the only limitation that now we have is support of enums. We, do, we like don't support them now because uh, like we could more or less easily add them to marine runtime, but it would be so hard to add them to the aqua side. So that's why we don't uh, like do it now, 
But like if uh, someone want to use Marine and uh, there would be demand for them, so we could easily easily eat them, add them. And uh, also, as I said, uh, Marine could be run uh, from the browser. And here you could see example how it could be run from the JavaScript site. Uh, so imagine a service that has some not so trivial uh, signature. Yes, it takes a string and takes some object that actually is a struct. And uh, on the right side, you could see how it could be called from the uh, JavaScript side. So and here, uh, so also I haven't said, but from the Rust side, you could also use uh, JSON objects. So we could also call function not with just vector five values, but with JSON object that would be also over it. Uh, and uh, like the result pointers would be passed to row modules uh, as it is. And here is the same experience. It's also like, it wouldn't be, I know, uh, as, as you would say, uh, serialized just by, I know, CRD and uh, passed as a array of bytes. It would be, uh, there would be like a honest, uh, uh, like type traversal, uh, some comparison and wolverine if each type as a signature says, how signature says. Uh, and the last topic here is about how all of this could be tested. So we have our own uh, another macro called marine test and it provides you also like uh, when you uh, cost when you rust experience. Uh, here you could should specify or like pass to configuration file and uh, pass to modules directories where the binaries are located. And you could just use inside uh, this function, you could use interface uh, that would be uh, like uh, completely the same as a, as a module has, yes? The difference here with usual testing that it's like in usual, this function itself compiles to WebAssembly and test runs from, from the WebAssembly itself. Here, this function won't be compiled to WebAssembly. Here, like under the hood, the Marine on time would be instantiated and the greeting function could be called. Uh, and also, we have almost the same experience for services. You could test several services. Uh, uh, is, it, uh, is it like on the slide? Here, yes, you could uh, just specify them in Marine test config and then uh, call their facade modules. Uh, and probably it's the last slide. <laughs> uh, it's uh, our last tool called Marine Repo. Uh, with this tool, we could just test uh, uh, modules from the repo experience. And here we could see example of IPFS, uh, like IP, IP, uh, IPFS effector and IPFS pure module, where IPFS effector uses uh, IPFS daemon located on your system and uh, here code like uh, an IPFS pure is just a module that code in itself IPFS effector. And here in this example, we just call uh, from the IPFS cure, uh, pure uh, function put, provide some arguments, one, two, and three in array. Uh, the result is a hash that published to IPFS and then we could call IPFS pure get providing this hash and you could see these beautiful numbers that would be a result of this uh, request itself. So thank you very much. Here you could see uh, like all links to the Marine uh, Rust SDK in Aqua. And also if you take care about Marine, please uh, take a look to Marine book. There is a, like complete information about architecture, about SDK, how we could develop. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, so uh, first question is why external binaries? Like why can't I just like use Wasm for everything? Why mounted binaries? Yeah, like why do I need to use curl or anything like that? Uh, because like you know when we started it, it was, um, it was very easy to just call them like in a prototype from your uh, WebAssembly module as a CLI binary. Mm -hmm. Now, was it like itself like so like advanced that it could be called from with help of WASI, not okay. with help of like the CLI modules. And also when like circuits was uh, made in WASI at the beginning of this year, and also like a lot of uh, programs could be, uh, could be called with uh, uh, Unix circuit with a local Unix circuit mm -hmm. with help of WASI circuits itself. 
So yeah, it's a good question. And uh, this interface could be considered as a, um, like as an example, as a, like uh, the most simple way to call binaries. And in future, we would consider uh, moving uh, to Vasi completely. Wait, so, so would I be able to like have my program specify it depends on like curl, and then when I compile my program into Wasm, it would take curl and like include that and then read, like transpile it? How would that work? Uh, no, 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 it, 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 it would be called just with Vasi, with Vasi process start. But then, I, but it still have to then run. Like the problem is, then I have to expect. Okay, what if the command doesn't exist? What if the command is malicious? All that kind of stuff. Like my, my question is, like, why can't I just like I basically like bundle curl with my my application? Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Um, yeah. So, yep, yeah, it's a good question. So that's why we have like model several model types as effectors and uh, pure modules. And effector modules should be reviewed before using on on node stuff. Or you know, no, I, I agree. I know. My point is like, do we really need effectors? Like, like, like we we can build a world where like we have like effectively like uh, just copy and write semantics and immutable files and stuff like that, where we don't actually need to modify this. My, my concern is like, once you start having a lot of different effectors, then you have to start reasoning about the interactions between the different effectors, and that can get difficult from a security perspective. But um, there, there's a uh, good hack around this, which is to treat those systems and the system it runs in as an actor. So for example, you can model the binary running on some host OS, mm -hmm. and ideally like a container VM or whatever, and treat that as an actor with some history. Um, and so maybe the history changes for, that, for the state of the local actor or whatever, but you have some model for encapsulating all the things with side effects so you just put into the, like, this like really dirty um, environment area where you don't, um, where you still use message passing into the pure area. Um, and so you can like compute in the pure area as much as, as you want and ideally fully, but then you can still interact with, yes, with impure models. services and external services by making sure that you model them as some long lived actor. And, and this might even be like massive scale systems, right? You can treat all of NTP <laughs> as like one actor that is just emitting some clock time, and that gives you like some. Uh, I guess what I was looking for is like actually just like taking curl and running it inside a Wasm VM, and then giving the Wasm VM access to the network via capabilities and stuff like that. Because that means I kind of like I don't have to like the only thing I, like if I need to write state, okay, I need some kind of access capabilities, but usually I don't. Like usually I just like I can have my local virtual file system, for example, in IPFS, and then it produces CID or something like that. Uh, so like you, just, you very rarely actually need mutability for a lot of the stuff or effectors, but that's all. Most of that, like, sorry, next thing. Um, uh, so so uh, totally, completely agree. In in the case of curl, you just want to run that curl binary within Wasm and so on. It sounds like just like it was hasn't been a priority for them to like shift over. However, there are other cases where it's not curl. It's like some much more con uh, complex example that that you need a way of like adapting to external world in a way that you don't get to rewrite the, the world, but you have you can you have to make it make sense in, in this world and, and just figuring out the abstraction there so that you deal with all possible side effects of this thing that might influence some of the pure parts. Because uh, right now I think all the services are impure, right? All of the services are treated as like um, who knows what these things are running and you can't really reason about their state. Is that correct or yes. Yeah, so, so I think like once you start using IPLD there, then you get a hash linked state for those things. And ideally those can become um, this kind of like semi-pure, uh, I forgot what you called it, it was like this pure-ish boundary where like you have an, act, a, an actor that is effectively pure from the perspective of like when it, whenever you call it, whatever it outputs and so on, you can reason about that whole model, but it, it does preserve some local state um, over time. Yeah, actually, actually, yes, it's it's a good uh, it's a good comment. Uh, I think we in this way we could consider use, uh, use like these things instead of just pass on the local system. Yes, I, it's a good idea to use IPOD. Yeah, so sometimes this is uh, called like pure state. Uh, sorry, impure state. Yes, pure state, um, at, or pure effects. Right. Um, there's, but there's that distinction. Right of this is something that I can rewind and that's okay, and I'm just grabbing 
you know, a, a reference versus I'm sending an email and I'm updating the state of the universe, right? Um, so, and you kind of like, often you want both, but you need to be really careful with the second one. Uh, next comment was on, on uh, I values. It looks like it's almost the IP lead data model, and we should be able to just create, a, yeah, codec as you're saying. But is it self-describing internally? As in, like I can I can take an I value object and say what it is. Like this is like no, no. It's it's just I value. So as I understand the question, you want to uh, like have information from like which services uh, I vector of I value kind. Key. No, no, no. Sorry, I, I I want to know like is it an int? Is it a string? Is it a whatever? Is that included inside the value? No, no, no. It's 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 enum. It's Rust enum. So it's Rust enum. You could have like match from variants. It's not not a not a right object. Okay, but like I like it's, it's a bit different. It's a bit. Di I I know I saw the Rust enum there, but that has to then cross a boundary and go somewhere else. So. Yeah. But it's not so descriptive. I understand you're asking. It's not so descriptive. It's but yes. But the, uh, how does this cross the boundary then? How do you get this from point A to point B? Like we, we, we have ABI, how this I value cross the uh, boundary. And the, like in the future, when we are, mo now we are moving to. That's exactly why I need interface types. They decode yes. and decode leak and lower. Yeah. That's exactly why. Yeah, you just, you just, I, think, I think what's going on is you have some functions some, and, and you define the type there and then you use this to pass the value from the input, but it does not carry the text. It's just like an impact box. Got it. Okay, but, but I guess my question is more like when because you, when you cross this boundary, you have to you go do something or you do some funkiness. No, I think, I think it, uh, the second. You analyze the, the web assembly text and just like find which these types are and then make uh, a type generation program. Exactly, yes. We, 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 we embed information into WebAssembly binary itself in a custom section. And custom section contains like description of all function of all their signatures. And like according to their signatures, runtime could like extract types and extract uh, objects from WebAssembly memory. Okay, so it's not dynamic at all. It's like I have some static object. Uh, it's dynamic in the sense of that like the signature of function like could be changed. In, uh, and when you like uh, having exported from a host site function, you should you shouldn't know a type like in advance. Mm -hmm. you, you could like you could code it like you could code, uh, you could put it into our dis descriptor. One second, into this one. In this sense, it's like dynamic function. Okay, but in that sense, like something is going to have to, like, say the types at some point. Yes, it's uh, this safety uh, checks by interface type instructions. How does that check? Like, wh where are the types specified? Like, wherever you have code touching these boxes, you you bring your own typing. It's up to you to make sure that you write the right types. Okay, but what is it like? So, like, you have code one side, code the other side. Something here where you transfer the data across. Yes. You write the text over here, and the system does nothing to help It's not. Like in 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 so uh, in WebAssembly, so it's how interface types works. In the WebAssembly binaries, there is a like description of signature of function, so these types. And okay, there is a no. bunch bunch of web. Uh, I will I will show but, you. But that, that, okay. Never mind. Uh, we can talk later. Uh, oh, one yeah, second. We'll so, okay, so that means basically this does not work as IPLD. Uh, because we require more fuzzy type. Okay, let me try just usual, usual terminal instead of fish. Uh, so there is a like it's a greeting binary so that contains only one export functions 
and there is a how it looks like from the low level stuff. There is an adapter function for this role type function, and it contains of uh, interface type extraction that actually like the do all the like all the logic of type extraction. Is it? No, we will come. Okay. Okay, and then um, so how much bind gen can you generate? Well, you have the, the function, uh, the output types, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you can generate that, but can you generate like the actual function calls like from JavaScript into the WebAssembly, like uh, what uh, Was Was Wasm Engine does currently? Yes, it's it, it's similar to Wasm Engine, yes, and uh, like if you're talking about uh, so the first thing that I need to say is that binaries run both on a, a JavaScript side and Rust side that they are essentially the same. So the glue code that's generated by the, our procedure macros, they are the same both for JavaScript and Rust. And uh, like it's a bit similar to what Wasm engine uh, does, yes, but it does it only for JavaScript side. And there are like, uh, there is a bunch of uh, ABI functions that could every module export, should every module export, like allocate, uh, deallocate, and stuff like that. Uh, so they're similar to what uh, should be do in the interface type side. And uh, like actually uh, a core module that um, the core on this slide, it actually call, it actually in interprets interface types instructions and when uh, some sort of like WebAssembly memory touch should be done, it calls import function from uh, Marine.js and Marine.js acts here as a, um, some sort of manager and itself it also comes to a specific module and extract memory from it. Am I answering the question? Yes. Um, and how well does this work with, uh, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, the share everything scheme where you have multiple memory or multiple memories accessing each other. Um, so actually Marine doesn't support shared everything uh, linking scheme at all. Okay. okay. Yeah. There, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> cool. 